when my dad used to bring us down to the waterways, down to the sea, we weren't allowed to go into the water until he walked in and he did his ceremonial welcome to talk to the spirits of the sea to make everything safe for us and then we could go in and play in the water. So it was all done by ceremony. Bunaru is the, the hottest season of the year, so the Nungas would have been south. They would have already come down in the last season. The camp should, by right, be set up already and, and um, they'd be well and truly into the fishing and, and to harvesting the foods. They'd find a beach where the dolphins would be, and the dolphins used to be their work animals. Most of the tribe would have to stay up out of sight and there would be one person, uh, they had to do it all by ceremony, one person, he had to have a beard and he had to make a fire and the smoke would flow out over the water and he'd have two tapping sticks and he'd be tapping the sticks together and he'd be singing, chalk, chalk, chalk. And then the dolphins would start working the salmon herrings in front of them, salmon, and then the dolphins behind. And once they get out on the beach, the whole tribe would come in and pick up as many as they could. Not long ago, my family went down to Chains Beach there in, in Albany, and they said uh, the kids were all playing around and shouting and going, you know, having a good time, and then and all of a sudden the dolphins started to uh, to bring the salmon in. And they said uh, it was the most exciting time of their lives with all these big salmon swimming around their legs and that. And they, were, they were just having fun. Kaya, kaya. And I just said to you, yes, yes, my sisters and brothers and children, I'm happy that you've come to sit, talk and listen on our ground. There's birds, you know, all of those would have been a source of food. I was hunting birds with boomerangs, so they, you know they would have been sitting up there in, the, in those little low areas, or those little um, covered areas there with the bulrushes and sitting in there, waiting on the birds to get close enough to put the boomerangs over top. We came from the Noangra area, so we used the lake systems, and we used to go there, and uh, my dad used to go there to to get us a swan for food. And so we'd have to get in uh, the edge of the lake and then kick our legs up because the swans were very inquisitive. And so they used to come and see what was going on. So that's how he got himself a swan. In Noongar culture, they never overfished or over killed. They just got uh, enough to satisfy the needs of their family. And you've got to focus here, so that's, that's your focus. Morley Beach and Prawn Rock Channel are two really important pieces of habitat in Wilson Inlet for migratory shorebirds which travel every year between Siberia and Australia through the East Asian Australasian Flyway and they come here each year to feed um, so they can fuel their migration and it's this time of year that shorebirds are putting on their final fat reserves in order to make their return migration to their northern breeding grounds. Shorebirds like to eat invertebrates um, and small fish and crustaceans which are living in the mud and really shallow water and it's that type of habitat which is really important for them. 
Migratory shorebirds, what they do is really, really quite incredible. Every single year, they'll fly to Siberia, um, and then they'll breed, and then they'll turn around and they'll come back, and then they spend most of the year in Australia. So um, the average migratory shorebird is going to fly uh, 25,000 kilometres um, in a single year. Bartow godwits are probably one of the most well-known endurance flyers within the animal kingdom. A Bartow godwit in New Zealand was set with a satellite tracker um, back in 2007, and that bird flew continuously for nine days for nearly 12,000 kilometres. And these birds do this year in, year out. They can live for 20 or so years, which is equal to the distance of travelling to the moon. The smaller birds have to stop and refuel as they're travelling. So they hop their way up the flyway and they stop at critical spots along the way, such as the Yellow Sea. And it's land reclamation projects which occur in the Yellow Sea, which has led to up to 60 to 70 percent of the mudflat which they feed on to be um, destroyed. Just within the course of my lifetime, I've gone from seeing shorebirds regularly to often going to locations and you won't see any migratory shorebirds anymore. Species like curlew sandpiper, which used to be relatively abundant down here, have now declined by well over 90% uh, throughout the flyway. If the birds are leaving Australia and they're not in their best condition, they're not going to make it to their breeding grounds. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's fabulous. A spoonbill, and, and it's at, to absolutely at its leisure to having a little bit of a feed, looking around, the wind's blowing its feathers. It looks absolutely happy, absolutely happy. In Wilson Inlet, you'll also see resident shorebirds. For example, red cap plover, they're a really, really small bird and they're real habitat generalists. So you'll see them on a surf beach, you'll see them on rocks, and you'll also see them in intertidal sandfire flats like what's behind me. Red cap plovers are particularly vulnerable to human disturbances because they breed in the same sort of habitats that we'll often uh, go for while driving or take our dogs for a walk. And they'll often just get crushed by people not realizing that they're there. Similar to the red cap plovers are hooded plovers, and this particular species has gone through massive decline because of human disturbance, but also because of predation from introduced species like cats and foxes. Shorebirds really deserve a bit more attention and a bit more love. They're not just these little brown birds which we see running around the beach, they're much, much more than that. The moral of the story is shorebirds are great, so and you should be excited about them and you should be really excited that they're here in this area where you live and you get to see them.